How's it going, Eliminators? Today, we're going to be talking about some dielectric grease and why you should use it on your equipment. So let's get right into it. So I have in front of me some dielectric grease. I have both an aerosol can and just a tube of it. Both of these are made by Permatex and a big shout out goes to them for sending this my way. Now, chances are you may know what dielectric grease is, but a lot of you may have never heard of it. So what is dielectric grease? Well, it is a silicone based lubricant that you would apply to an electrical connection right there. So you would use this stuff on plugs and connectors of various kinds. So reading from the back, you can see that it protects ignition parts, wiring from moisture, salt, dirt, and corrosion. It's also going to prevent arcing, extend service life, which we will get into. But the big thing is protects against corrosion. That's the main thing that I use this stuff for. You guys can see here, you can use it on battery terminals, spark plug boots, electrical connections, light sockets, fuses, distributor caps, coil connectors, switches, basically any kind of electrical connection you can use this stuff on. Now, dielectric grease is a silicone-based grease, but even though it's been designed to use on electrical connectors, it is not a conductive material, which means that it does not improve an electrical connection. Dielectric grease is technically an insulating product. However, you can use it on an electrical connection and it will not negatively affect the electrical connection. This stuff basically only prevents corrosion from happening inside of an electrical connection. Now, you're gonna wonder why would I use this stuff like this and just pack it inside of the female end of this snowblower starting cord. Well, coming over to this one here, I have another one. You're gonna notice that the female end here is completely cut off. The male end is there all the prongs are there. So this is what you would plug into the wall of your house. And then the female end here would go into your snowblower's starter. So similar to this right here, or this one here, we have a snowblower starter. Here is your connection right there. That is the male end. So then you would take your female end, plug that in, press your button and start your snowblower. So on this one, we had an electrical connector that was stuck inside of a starter and we just could not remove it. Now, the main reason that I've seen a snowblower starter cable get seized into the starter input here is because my customers do not use dielectric grease before they plug in their starter cable. But the big thing is that a lot of my elderly customers plug the female end into their starter and then they take the whole cord and they wrap it around the handle of the snowblower so that they don't lose it. And then this ends up sitting plugged in for a year and then they take it out and they use it and it gets wet because you know you're throwing snow and corrosion forms. And what I've seen on some of these starters is the prongs pull right out because they're so corroded to the female end of your starter cable. Now, if that happens on your ground prong, it's not a big deal, as I have one here that actually does not have a ground plug in it, and it still works perfectly fine. The negative and positive up here works to power the starter. That one unbolts just right there. This one, it's a more of an integrated design, and I've seen before where like one of these prongs will just completely break away, and then you're left with a starter that does not work anymore. So basically, you're just gonna take this stuff and pack it into the female end of any kind of electrical connector, and it's going to prevent corrosion. And I would highly recommend using it on a snowblower. So coming down to a riding lawnmower here, you're going to have a spark plug boot. This one's a V-twin, so it has two. And you can see that that spark plug boot came off just fine. What I've seen on some snowblowers is there's so much water that it forms rust and corrosion on these spark plug caps here. And your high tension lead cap or your spark plug boot cap here ends up seizing in place on the spark plug. And it just makes it a little bit tougher to get it off. You know, you might have to take a pair of pliers and you kind of completely destroy them sometimes because inside of there is a metal connector that goes back to your coil. So a little bit of dielectric grease inside of this spark plug cap will help prevent corrosion from occurring at your spark plug boot. And like you saw, I have the aerosol version of the Permatex dielectric grease. So they give you this really long tapered nozzle here, and this is a high pressure can. So basically what you would 
would do is put this tube into the boot and you would just depress down and it's going to fill that boot up with some dielectric grease. So this can with the extended tip there makes it super simple to go ahead and get into some hard to reach places instead of using the tube where you're squeezing it in. So like I said, you're just going to put a little bit of dielectric grease into that spark plug boot and then you could go ahead push it onto your spark plug and you'll never have to worry about that corroding in place. And it's interesting that I have this riding lawnmower here in front of me today. It had electrical problems. Now the engine, not sure if it runs, you know, there's a bunch of stuff that it needs, belts and, you know, quite a bit of work. The deck is in very bad condition. However, you're going to notice that I have the key switch pulled out. And the other day I was doing lots of electrical work, primarily electrical diagnosis. So this wouldn't start when you depressed the brake and turned the key. And I was wondering why, and I had to go through with a bunch of multimeters to figure out where I had power and where I didn't. And it turned out that the fuse inside of the fuse box was good. However, there was so much corrosion built inside of this little fuse box here that one of the prongs, specifically on this red side, so this is your hot side, that wire would go all the way back down to one side of your starter solenoid and that's where your battery positive goes down to so this wire here taps into your battery positive hot side now this wire goes to your key switch so that when you turn your key it sends power down to the solenoid which then makes a connection between your battery positive and your starter cable at your engine so what ended up happening was when I tested for 12 volts, I had 12 volts on this hot side. So I knew that my battery positive cable was good and it was powering the solenoid. And when I did a continuity test between this wire here and my red battery wire at the starter key, I had continuity. So I knew there was a connection there. I then tested the fuse and the fuse tested okay. So I couldn't figure out what was happening until I pulled the fuse out and had a look inside of the connector. Now I didn't get a picture, but one of the prongs was so corroded that it actually corroded into the open position. So the fuse was good, but when I inserted the fuse, it was not making a connection between the battery positive and my starter key switch so essentially I was turning my key switch but there was no 12 volts at the key switch to send back down to the solenoid to turn over the engine so basically I went in there with a little bit of contact cleaner cleaned it up and as you guys can see just loaded it with Permatex dielectric grease put the fuse in there so now when I turn the key the engine turns over as it should I still haven't gotten it started yet, so it may need some carb work, but you know, that's just one thing that could have been prevented had my customer just used a little bit of dielectric grease in the fuse box. And if you'll remember the Scott's L2548 riding lawnmower that I did, I ended up installing a PTO pigtail connector, and I did pack that full of dielectric grease as well to further reduce the chances of corrosion happening at that connector. And like I said, even though this is a silicone based product and is therefore not a conductive material, so it is technically by definition an insulating material, there is no negative effects from using it directly on a connector that has a strong metal to metal connection. So if I was to plug this in to my starter here, there's a strong metal to metal connection and you don't have to worry about negative effects. You know, you're not going to have a voltage decrease or increased resistance. You don't have to worry about any of that. This stuff is awesome. You know, I use it pretty much every day whenever I'm doing a snow blower because it's going to make it so that you won't have one of your connectors kind of seize and corrode in place because as I said we had to cut off the female head of that starter cable there and then we had to go in with a drill and drill away and you know pull out with a pair of pliers all of the pieces and then we had to sell a new starter cable uh, because we don't recommend putting the universal heads because they're a little bit bigger and they can get stuck inside of here these cables here you're going to notice they have this little head on them and they fit into this little groove right back here so this has been designed specifically to use with this starter and for how inexpensive this stuff is go ahead and pick yourself up a small tube like this and it should be more than enough for the average you know do-it-yourselfer at home repair guy 
So that's gonna wrap up today's video. Again, just reiterating the importance of using dielectric grease on your electrical connectors. Like I said, it's essentially just a grease lubricant that's silicone based for your electrical connections. It'll prevent corrosion from occurring and prevent you from having electrical issues in the future on your equipment. With that being said, if you guys enjoyed the video, think about leaving me a thumbs up. You know, it really helps me out. You can click here to subscribe and click over here to watch one of my previous videos. I upload every single week, so be sure to stop on by next week, check channel out for new content, and as always, guys, thanks for watching.